Hey, number nerds. So you've made it to the calculus club, congrats. Whether you're here by choice or because your schedule said so, get ready for a wild ride through the world of calculus. Now, before you start sweating over derivatives and integrals, let's set the stage for the newbies. Imagine you're at a theme park, standing in line for the biggest, baddest roller coaster. You know, the one with all the loops and drops that make your stomach do somersaults. Well, calculus is like the blueprint behind that coaster. It tells us how to design those crazy curves and loops that thrill seekers love. But don't worry, we're not just here to talk about roller coasters, although they're pretty cool. We're diving into calculus because it's the language of change. Whether you're tracking the speed of a rocket blasting off into space or calculating the volume of a weird shaped blob, calculus has got your back. Get ready to laugh, groan, and maybe even learn a thing or two along the way. Chapter one, the prelude to calculus. Before diving into calculus, let's take a step back and understand its origins. The word calculus traces its roots to the Latin word, meaning small stone or pebble, hinting at its early use in counting and calculation. Early civilizations developed rudimentary methods for performing arithmetic operations and solving geometric problems. However, it was the ancient Greeks who laid the groundwork for the concepts of calculus with their investigations into geometry and the motion of objects. One of the pivotal figures in the history of calculus was the brilliant mathematician Archimedes. Through his method of exhaustion, Archimedes developed techniques for approximating the areas and volumes of curved shapes, foreshadowing the ideas later formalized in calculus. Over the centuries, mathematical thinkers continued to refine these methods, paving the way for the birth of calculus in the 17th century. Chapter 2. The Rise of Calculus The dawn of the 17th century witnessed a revolution in mathematics with the groundbreaking work of luminaries like Isaac Newton and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. Independently and almost simultaneously, Newton and Leibniz developed the foundational principles of calculus, forever changing the landscape of mathematics and science. Central to the development of calculus were two key concepts, the derivative and the integral. The derivative measures the rate of change of a function, while the integral calculates the accumulation of quantities over an interval. Together, these concepts provide a comprehensive framework for understanding change and motion in the physical world. Chapter 3. Unraveling the Derivative Imagine you're driving a car along a winding road and you want to know how fast you're going at any given moment. This is where the derivative comes into play. The derivative of a function represents its instantaneous rate of change akin to the speedometer in your car. Whether you're accelerating, decelerating, or maintaining a constant speed, the derivative tells you how quickly your position is changing with respect to time. Mathematically, the derivative is defined as the limit of the average rate of change as the interval approaches zero. In other words, it quantifies the slope of the tangent line to the curve at a particular point. This fundamental concept lies at the heart of calculus and finds applications in various fields, from physics and engineering to economics and biology. Chapter 4. Embracing the Integral Let's shift our focus to the integral, the counterpart to the derivative. Suppose you want to determine the total distance traveled by a moving object or the total area enclosed by a curved shape. This is where the integral comes into play. The integral calculates the accumulation of quantities over an interval, providing a means to measure total change or accumulated effect. Mathematically, the integral represents the area under the curve of a function over a specified interval. It is basically about finding the sum of infinitely many infinitesimal quantities, a process known as integration. Through integration, we can compute diverse quantities such as displacement, area, volume, and even probability. Chapter 5. The Fundamental Theorem Unveiled at last, we arrive at the pinnacle of calculus, the fundamental theorem. This theorem establishes a profound connection between derivatives and integrals, linking the concepts of instantaneous change and growth effect in a remarkable synthesis of ideas. The fundamental theorem of calculus consists of two parts, each illuminating a different aspect of this profound relationship. Part one states that if we have a continuous function and we find its antiderivative, 
then we can calculate the definite integral of the function over an interval by evaluating the antiderivative at the endpoints of the interval and subtracting. Too much to take in. Let me try again. In simpler terms, part one allows us to determine the total change or accumulated effect represented by a curve by finding its antiderivative and evaluating it at the endpoints of the interval. This elegant result provides a powerful tool for computing areas, volumes, and other quantities of interest. Part 2 states that if we have a function defined by an integral and we take its derivative, we obtain the original function back. In essence, Part 2 tells us that differentiation undoes integration. It allows us to find the rate of change or slope of a curve at any given point by analyzing its integral. This concept is particularly useful in applications where we need to understand how quantities change over time or space. Together, Parts 1 and 2 of the Fundamental Theorem provide a generalized framework for understanding the relationship between derivatives and integrals, allowing us to tackle a wide range of problems in calculus and beyond. Chapter 6. Harnessing the Power of Calculus Now That we've unraveled the Fundamental Theorem, let's explore its implications and applications. From determining the area under a curve to analyzing the motion of objects, calculus permeates virtually every field of science, engineering, and economics. In physics, calculus enables us to describe the motion of particles, the flow of fluids, and the behavior of electromagnetic fields. In engineering, it underpins the design of structures, the optimization of systems, and the analysis of complex phenomena. In economics, it facilitates the modeling of markets, the prediction of trends, and the formulation of policies. Conclusion The Legacy of Calculus As we wrap up our calculus journey, I hope you've seen the magic behind the math. Calculus isn't just about crunching numbers. It's a way to understand the world in a whole new light. So whether you're a future mathematician or just someone who loves a good challenge, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep embracing the beauty of calculus. Thanks for joining us on this adventure. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Until next time, stay curious.